Forged in Greece, casted by cupcakes and sprinkles, there lives one monster that prowls around schools across the nation. He's weighing in at 650 pounds, so damn fat, not even TLC picked him up off the bench. This obese semen demon of Greece got caught chasing after someone's niece one too many times. Over the last few years, he became notorious for cult classics such as sizzling up his fried dickin, and the one faithful day he almost shot out a stool in school in the name of science, and who can't forget his conservative talks about guns, even though this motherfucker already packing a Big Mac on him. Only recoil he knows is at the front door of a fucking fresh time market because he's scared of everything in there. And it's crazy that Annalie Wapo over here is even into politics. The only left and right I thought this motherfucker knows was the size of a Twix bar. I'm sure he made plenty of appearances in the city council talking about the Eagles and why the age of consent should be lowered. But I'm sure many of you know him as the Crusader of Cupcakes. His name is EDP445 and about a year ago he decided to make a career ending choice of driving two hours to mass pissers and clash kissers with who he thought was a 13 year old girl. And after he got done striking an Uncle Sam pose, offering a fist bump to the catchers, he casually told them that he didn't drive two hours to fuck a 13 year old. He was actually there for a cupcake. He was so insincere and acted like what he did was just a common error one might make on a lazy Sunday. You know, he just took a simple wrong turn and almost slid right into a child's asshole. Something that happens to the best of us. Oh, well, I thought in the DMs a decoy said I can get some vanilla on my dark chocolate. You know, how it goes. Typical conversations at the bakery. And my hunger was so unfashionable that I told the baker that I wanted to fuck him. And sent him a pic of my chocolate chocolate ass dick. Do you guys have red velvet by any chance? But the glove go gabba lab yo gabba gabba and the meth lab ass motherfucker basically omitted everything of him literally asking for sex and even going as far as sending the decoys pictures of his own spooky dookie as a form of flirting. That was another highlight of his life that paved the legacy he owns today. He told a miner that he's about to munch down on a few street tacos and then proceeded to say he took a mean ass shit in the toilet. And I guess if the girl wanted to discredit his work or didn't believe it, EDP decided to send a picture of his short art to the girl as confirmation just so she really knows that he really on the block tootin' rocks. So it was a wild journey and during that confrontation he basically tried to justify everything he did and when the predator hunters threatened to call the police he broke down into tears started stumbling around like Mr. Krabs when he hit his foot on the damn pebble curled over the fucking wall looking like a Rod Wave album cover so fries and chicken Side of biscuit, that ain't then Happy Feet tucked in his meat, waddled back to his car, popped two tires when he got in because the vehicle couldn't handle his own weight. Then he drove off into the sunset and returned back to the sperm sanctuary, never to be seen again is the exact fucking opposite of what happened. Which is why I'm here today to go after AC or after Cupcake on the EDP timeline and document what he's been doing on his day-to-day -day life after this whole confrontation. And that motherfucker can't run or hide, so it was really easy to catch up to what he's been doing, what moves he's been making, and what jobs he's owned, and what platforms he's also returned on ever since that day. So ladies and ladies with dicks, strap on your strap on. So make sure everybody stand up, get as uncomfortable as possible as we deep dive down into the ass chaps and greasy tip flaps of EDP for Four, five. Chain on me so I see it, look like some frost All the diamonds we be yes, just like some boss I be shopping in sex while you shopping at Ross I can blow a couple so EDP's immediate response to this whole situation of him being exposed for trying to get all litty with some kitty titties was to act like none of it ever happened. Even to this day, he is trying to move on his normal life, acting like he made a little oopsie doops, just a little honky donk that everybody makes. I can't count the amount of times that I went to buy a birthday cake and then I get arrested for pedophilia. It's just the worst. Every time I grab a grocery bag, clerk starts talking about restraining orders. Like, if you don't like using my coupon book, just say that. I don't know why we gotta be all extra. But the worst thing is, this wasn't his first time EDP even got caught. There was multiple instances of EDP. EDP getting exposed, this motherfucker was trying to complete the Pokédex of underage sex. That's why his big bubble gut is shaped like a damn Pokéball. Bitch's body is built like a Goliath Games flat ball. Now, when he was exposed eight times in the past, pretty much chasing down every kid like this motherfucker was the Bababa Duke on Weight Watchers, but even after he was exposed not once, not twice, but eight times for talking dirty to girls that struggled to sing the alphabet, he went to YouTube for his official apology, which he might as well upload another video of him clogging a toilet because he seems more sincere in that than what he had to say for this bulletproof defense. So EDP stated his case and marched up to the podium to basically say that all of these no pussy have an ass, giggle when they pee have an ass bitches, set up a fake account and my dumb ass fell for it.
Now, if this was said in a courthouse, I'm sure the judge would have stood up and shed a tear for his act of bravery because he had no shame. The case literally opened and closed in a matter of 10 seconds. But the thing was, nobody really cared. Apparently, seven minors was okay, but eight is where EDP crossed the line because that's how his legacy exploded. With the combination of all these things mixed into the pot, the big ass power puff was caught chasing after underage girls. Townville was in trouble, and Mr. McDouble over here wasn't making anything better. The risk of sentence for a bitch that can't even have her period is quite cobby wobbles, if you ask me, especially the horny text he would send the decoy that sounded like if Shakespeare was trying to shake his spear out. I thought bro was Robert Frost the way he was constructing his fan fictions with this girl. One example was him telling a whimsical tale, almost similar to Rapunzel, where he wanted to climb through her window, which was already more than enough said because there's not one window this motherfucker is hopping through. Shit would look like Baymax trying to climb through a Firestone tire. And then he went on to say he wanted to kidnap her and take her to a dungeon. What the fuck? is wrong with you. A true sexual assault tale you hear right out of a Disney movie, truly something beautiful to behold. Along with him sending a snap for his crap and then getting hungry for a cupcake, causing him to tell a minor that he wanted to bend her over and bust her doonies down, with sending evidence of the weapon that he was going to be using by posting multiple half flaccid cock pics to a 13 year old as well, just to really pop the extra cherry on the cake. And when the video was posted, EDP's career was so thought finished. All those stories about shooting daughter water and fighting 13 year olds ended up in EDP trying to fuck one. His channel was deleted, his Instagram was taken down, his love and passion for football and the Eagles was no longer shared. But never to fear, he can share his love for the sport because he'll be a great wide receiver in prison. I'm sure he'll be spreading some damn Eagles up in the jail cells. So it was thought that even though he couldn't run or physically hide, that he was gone and gone for good. Another predator that became extinct. So after about a week of silence and after he got banned on literally everything imaginable, I'm sure that even his MySpace account that he used to message his grandma back in 2009 even got deleted. ADP decided if he can't post on any website, why not make his own? And that's exactly what he did. He contacted Yonder Air Dev and they got to work. Setting age requirements to 18 and under, must watch My Little Pony to ride a little bony, a shit pick was required to log in every day. It was like a site no one would ever see before. And after a few weeks after absolutely nobody hyped it up, the developer he was working with, which I thought was initially Jared Fogle, decided to cancel developing the site and remove all contacts from EDP himself. And the best part is the site is still visible to this day. All it says is just coming soon. EDP, I don't think, can help help but have the most unsettling pictures for his graphic designs. Shit looks like if Stephen King was hired to make a new character for McDonald Land. Shit actually terrifies me. Turn that happy meal into a fap meal if you walk in my front door. Nothing like a pedophilic subway surfer character to be your mascot to kick off the website. The first people that are going to be signing up is the damn BCPD. But after losing everything except a few fucking pounds, EDP was living from hotel room to hotel room. He was like a Jehovah Witness for Holiday Inn. That or he's just notorious on breaking elevators. Motherfucker would try to go to floor 7 and end up in the board. Boiler room. <laughs> People were pretty much playing Pokemon Go trying to find out where he was and they did a damn good job of it. They must have had Agent 47 on the case because half of the hotels he even stayed at, he got kicked out before he could even swipe the card off the damn door. He's a danger to everyone in here. Okay, so I just called security. Yeah. Go ahead and let security know all this information. I will be more than happy to let them know. Thank yes. you very much. The managers were notified on who he was and what reputation he had, so they probably caught him balls dangling out in the swimming trunks, arm floaties on, ready to blow some bubbles in the pool and booted his ass back into the lobby. With him getting spotted everywhere like Peter Parker after his identity was revealed, he had to lay low, cruise by so nobody could spot him, which for him is very hard to do. There's not too many people that somehow managed to have an ass crack on the back end in the front of them. I mean, there's no missing him. My man looks like Filthy Phil if he was overdosing off of Vicodin pills. Your body's on Southpaw settings. It looks like your stomach was put on backwards. Let's become a Lyft driver, the one app that requires a photo ID to show your face before you actually pick up the people. And honestly, I don't know when EDP people learn to actually take a somewhat flattering photo that doesn't look like a fucking SWAT monster that'd be part of a campfire story. Like, it's crazy how you haven't tried to even look flattering in one photo. If I was on Uber and I seen them telling me this motherfucker's pulling up, I'd deadass hop in the car and throw a cinder block on the gas pedal whenever we're approaching an off-road cliff. This photo looks like a monster's in character if one of them took a selfie under a kid's bed before he fucking scared him. But there's no way this photo doesn't scream my trunks make noises and I drive barefoot with one toe out like Spongebob. Hop in the car and see the fat bitch off a of Psychonauts. You tell me you wouldn't scream and run and then hop back in because you know your broke ass ain't walking? There was one man that was brave enough to dock 
document his experience with him and honestly I felt like he was more confused when he hopped in because it looked like this motherfucker fused into the airbag but nope that's just his body. I feel like if he actually did crash and the airbag went off that would look like two people running full speed with yoga balls at each other. I bet EDP would probably just fly out through the fucking sunroof. But shortly after he got recognized being a Lyft driver his allegations and past quickly spread at the Lyft themselves and they lifted his fat ass right off the damn app and five stories up. He was ineligible to be a driver so dick depleted and driving defeated EDP went to the one other thing that makes him horny which was food. He started working for Uber Eats which you can already guess how long that lasted not long at all you know if that drive was longer than five minutes you would be lucky to get a crinkle fry and an ice cube in your damn drink. That's just him being generous this motherfucker would be one throat in your chicken wings and do it with a smile. So what other thing makes him horny besides food? That's right troll your finger because we got a dinger it's children. It was rumored he decided to apply to a Chuck E. Cheese next. The reason why I'm not really elaborating on this is because the only source you can get this info from is a reddit post which you guys know is the most viable source of credible information. You can look up a cough remedy on there and someone by the name of Chunk of Chuck 47 will tell you to aggressively shake your ass on a burning hot stove to ease the coughing. Point being it's probably not true but if it is I wouldn't be surprised. I would like to think he isn't that stupid but maybe bro just couldn't hold back the desires and wanted to bust down some fuck at the old Chuck. I don't know. After that his whereabouts were relatively unknown for multiple weeks until his close friend that would be a part-time standby paramedic as well just in case EDP suffered from cardiac arrest because he would film videos of him going through different drive-thrus and labeled it a day in the life of EDP. But I guess that's what his life pretty much consists of. Eat, beat, show my guns, and call the fourth grader that lives next door honey buns and repeat. But his friend came forward on his own YouTube channel explaining rumors of EDP getting arrested and claimed that he was actually sitting behind bars as we speak getting his own cupcake eaten out by Tyrese Johnson III up in the state penitentiary. But I've done a lot of digging and couldn't find any records of him being registered to anywhere besides a cooking channel subscription and a Nick Jr. premium. But if the police actually did catch him hiding in one of the fast food bathrooms, I'm sure once they got him there, they realized he couldn't fit in the cell. Shit probably looked like the gym teacher off a gumball trying to go through a corridor. So they probably chained him up and forklifted his ass back home. So Felipe, which was his friend, claimed that EDP was stowed away never to see the sunlight again. But the thing was, he had no proof whatsoever to back any of this up. Besides him showing a few call logs from a no-caller ID number, which could have been his grandma cheat calling him at 3 a.m. or a prostitute pip wanting to share his syphilis Sunday special deal they have going on at half price. Point being, it could have been the hash slinging slasher or the fairy fucking godmother for all we know. It's just pretty much unknown to who's giving him a ring. Two minutes later or so, I pretty much got a call from um, from a no no caller ID number, so I didn't pick up. Then a minute later or two, we got the same the same call. Now, I'm not no detective here, but I think the best way to ensure that EDP is not in jail is seeing that he's still on the fucking internet. After the whole Jerry Springer episode of a confrontation that EDP was caught in, his YouTube was deleted off the face of the earth, but that wasn't stopping him because he wanted to start what he called a movement, which I find quite ironic because it seems like this guy doesn't know one flying fuck about movement besides his damn bowels that he decided to give out anatomy lessons to minors for by sending them the aftermath of his asshole bath. But he started his grand revolution on Facebook where he didn't even try to hide the fact that he was a child predator because look at that profile pic. Shit just looks like you can't go within 100 meters of a school zone or a nursing home. They don't want your fat ass in there either. Even though you're one burger away from joining them knowing your legs supporting your body is like balancing an elephant on a pair of high heels, but he wanted to lead on his love for the sport of football on this page, completely ignoring the entire situation or almost acting like the whole situation just never happened. He wanted to not have this haunt him for the rest of his life, but oh was he wrong. Matter of fact, this shit is going to chase him down to the day he kicks the bucket. He got removed off his Facebook page after a few weeks and quickly after his channel was removed, he was damn near broke, which I don't even know how with over 2 million subs to this channel, you got to almost try to be broke unless this motherfucker was sipping on a martini on a lawn chair in Costa Rica every two weeks. But I'm sure if he even went to Costa Rica for a vacation, he would get poached because people would mistake him for a fucking sperm whale. There's actually been records of him having only $3,000 to his name and leaks came out with people pretty much going into Dick Tracy detective mode in this bitch, identifying EDP's license plate to match what appears to be his Acura that has been sold. But he continued the rest of his life on foot, which he probably crawled everywhere because his body couldn't handle it. I bet the last time he seen his dick was in 2016. He had probably he had to have a selfie stick to take a picture of his dick that he sent to the kid because I'm sure he couldn't even see it over the fucking beach ball stomach that was covering it. So after Facebook booked him a fat dick in his face, he went off the grid, but he was so easily traceable. Hell, he's like a fucking slug, leaving a slimy snail trail wherever he goes. Got Chris Hansen like SpongeBob using his sense of taste to track down Brian. I'm sure Bakerfield PD probably played Gary's Come Home to track down this man. But he somehow was barely able to financially sustain himself, so he's living from suitcase, hopping from hotel to hotel. Be surprised if he walked up his 
the front desk and started singing them Christmas carols. Better he started spitting gospels to the lobby manager talking about how Jesus probably would have tapped a 13 year old if he was given a chance during the seven plagues. Or in the battle of Christ versus Lucifer where they both fought naked and they gave a soggy biscuit and a 13 year old got caught in the crossfire. So it should be perfectly acceptable today if it happened in biblical times. You're familiar with the Ten Commandments, right? Well, my brother in Christ, there was actually eleventh one on the back. It said, Thou shall slap a titty from any kitty. What do you think? You guys think I can stay? Three nights? Oh, six years? Oh, by the seven holy gods of the seas. That sounds fucking terrific. Wait, why are you putting handcuffs on? And they actually and thankfully took it seriously and shoved the foot down his cheek creek and got him the hell on out of there. And even some hotels automatically recognized him like he was just put in every Holiday Inn database. And it doesn't really help that this man is the most recognizable dude on the planet. Still getting burned on that tailpipe, barnacle boy. <laughs> Look at ass, motherfucker. Looks like a fat ass doll from the Tales from the Hood. Like you telling me you wouldn't see this bitch from three football fields away? This motherfucker's body's built like a damn squishmallow that came straight out the factory. I mean, for fuck's sake, his left tit looks like a goddamn oven, mate. You telling me your liver wouldn't quiver if you saw this man floating down a lazy river? I'd be running to the sunset till the fucking cows come home if I saw that man in a damn swimming pool. I mean, he looks like somebody with Parkinson tried to draw Uncle Ruckus and that's what they came up with. Every time this man steps outside, a solar eclipse happens, so the whole world is impacted by what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's no wonder why he's pretty much recognized anywhere he goes. Hell, I'm sure even if this dude went out to an eagle, game, people would come up to him for a hug thinking he was wearing a mascot suit. He would start giggling every time the children come on to pull his tail or some shit. But after EDP was done traveling around more than the gypsy on a honeymoon with their first cousin, I'm sure there was a night where he stayed under your bed and you didn't even know it. He sadly made it to turn back on the internet on basically any platform he could stay on without getting sniped off of within a week of joining it. So the first of many platforms he tried to make his return on was a platform he just got fucking banned off of, which was YouTube. She made his grand revolution comeback from child predator allegations by uploading some some bangers like my asshole is on fire and who can forget when he really took a home to the families across America with a fan hooked me up with a free pizza now a little reminiscent of the golden days of EDP because the last time that he talked about a pizza he tried hooking up with a fucking 13 year old so you know it really just all comes together maybe he was just feeling a little blast from the past that or he just fucking bought a pizza himself and just claimed himself to be a fan because nobody else is a fan of him at this point it's such a shame that this channel got wiped as well because he could have started a series with this like Girl Scouts hooked me up with a free box of cookies so I hooked my balls up to my fucking zipper trying to take my pants off. But you can really just see the character development and him working on self-important, really just showing the natural stages of his progression of becoming a better person. That being a fan, you know, helping out one of his inspirations, probably a 12 year old that he promised there was a G.I. Joe set at his house, so if you bought him a pizza, he would take him to see it. He shows you eating the pizza and then the next video right after that is that his asshole is on fire. So you can really just see the different phases of his life flashing before your eyes. The development of his body and mind is truly something to take note from. But like I said earlier, as a surprise to literally nobody, he was banned off that channel within a few weeks of creating it. So after his failed return on his beloved platform, YouTube, because apparently losing over 100 million views and 10 years of work overnight wasn't enough to keep him the fuck away from it, he started to basically register to any third-party streaming service imaginable. And the first platform he tried to take over was 3Speak, which I'm sure he easily got number one trending on there because that site has five active monthly users. Like, who the fuck does be getting home and be like, damn, that was a hard day at work. I can't wait to wind down and start geeking to my favorite speaker. He's the only user uploader this month. Hot dog, this one's gonna be a doozy. The more astonishing part that even after finding this site that he got banned off of it as well, which honestly, if I was EDP, I would be bamboozled to knowing that the site even had a fucking staff board there. In all honesty, the only reason he probably got banned was that there was two spiders that fucked on the keyboard and accidentally webbed all over the buttons and accidentally banned them. So after him setting the record to be the first and last person to be banned from 3Speak, he took on to their official forum to report his mission back the headquarters, which he said, for some reason, my channel was deleted. I don't have a clue what's going on. I didn't violate any guideline. Can you please tell me what's going on? Well, I'll be happy to tell you what's going on. On the slim chance, it's not because you're a child predator that maybe broke the rules. Perhaps the guideline you broke was just creating an account on their site in the first place. I'm sorry, but if you're trying to make a grand comeback that will shock the world to its core, something that would be talked about more than the second coming of Christ, you would think you would return somewhere that doesn't have tumbleweed swaying in the damn wind. Because I'm pretty sure Three Speak was just a website that some drunk guy created overnight and just forgot about it the next morning. So EDP decided to grab a bunch of courage to switch to another big sensational website, something that's second to content creation empires such as Jerkmate and the elderly sex life advice tab that's on Yahoo Answers, which is called Bego. Never heard of it? Don't worry, nobody else has either. I'm almost positive Drake could post the hot sauce birth control tutorial on that site and that shit would still be untraceable. EDP found it. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he created this website just to ban himself off of it. There was actually videos that served 
surfaced the internet of EDP streaming on Bigo, and in one of the streams, he had one of his viewers join the live and express his gratitude for EDP to be such an inspiring figure across the globe. Because of him, millions of parents across the nation bought their kids chastity cages for their children. Every time those kids go to the bus stop, they gotta wear that shit like they're wearing cups at a football practice. What? Why did you come to Big O? What the fuck is Big O? This app. Oh, you mean Bigo? Oh. Yeah. You know what the fuck yeah, you're talking about? Yeah. Um. Shit, man. The big homie James, man, he said, hey, bro, man, there's this app, nigga. I think you'll like it. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me go ahead and fuck with it and see, if we, and see what it's about. All right, bro. That's that's a lot. That's a, that's like, like you can find some bad bitches on here too, bro. You can find some bad bitches. On nigga. Here too. I... <laughs> Listen, man. I'm cool on that bullshit. I'm flying solo, nigga, from now on, man. So you don't want bitches, but you want kids? Block him. He's gone. Get him out. You bad, fat, nasty, big ass bitch. Just don't make that ass the fuck up. Bitch, you kid head ass bitch. Bitch, you like touching on little kids. Bitch, you want a cupcake? Bitch, you want a cupcake face, nasty, big ass bitch. You fat, nasty, big ass bitch. You gonna touch me next? You gonna touch me? You gonna touch me, you fat, nasty, big, nasty, big ass bitch? Bitch, you bald head ass bitch. You peanut head ass bitch. Fuck you, hoe. So as you can see, the people love him. I also love the way he had a little Mickey Mouse impression too on the side. Oh, you mean Bigo? Oh. Oh, you mean Bigo, the wonderful streaming service that you can access through your fingertips. <laughs> Sounded like a little old pedal that lives under the shoe. This ain't no motherfucking fairy tale. Stop talking like you're a mystical sparkle protector that guides the Kempis to the whimsical marshmallows, you fat, stinky, custard, double stuffed, crusty bitch that looks like a fucking goomba off a of Super Mario Brothers Wii edition. Just want to stomp on your ass till you go. But as you can see, see he literally just goes on live just to practically be insulted my favorite part of this whole altercation is not the fact that this motherfucker was being absolutely cooked rolling over a wood fire like a pig at a redneck's backyard barbecue it's the fact that edp went through the whole five stages of grief over that little therapy session he had with that dude you know at first he was in anger demanding for the mods he doesn't have to block him then he came to the realization that he had no mods and just slowly sunk down beneath the floorboards as his whole entire life was crumbling in front of him i just like to imagine that every time edp goes to lay down on a bed that the ceiling from the floor below him just starts drooping down like we're just sitting at the kitchen table having a fine dining experience at the family dinner and the ceiling starts sinking down oh my sweet god martha there's a flood upstairs the ceiling is falling no mark that's just brian taking his nine to five nap again oh he just sleeps like an angel you can hear his lung collapsing all the way from downstairs hey, do i smell beef stroganoff you must be higher than a draft's pussy if you think i'm missing this wait till i come in. so basically his current career has just turned into being insulted live on camera it's like seeing public humiliation for free because you can just wham your dick out and EDP will bend over and take it with no prepaid charges or over the phone contracts. You can end this man's life for no down payment. It's honestly nothing but pitiful that his life has came to this point, that he's even trying every single desperate aspect to get a taste of the success he had on the internet once again. And as we can see, it's just really not working out, is it? You would think he would reach a point of defeat and just give up, but nah, this man is like a three-legged horse with his ass on backwards. He just keeps running until the fucking cows come home. But with him running, he only gets so far until he falls, but that time has not come yet. So after using Bebo and Three Speak, Groupon, Silk Road, and the St. Paul First Baptist Youth Church website for live streaming, hell, I wouldn't be surprised if he went on Omegle and started having a podcast live with the viewer that he was talking to and then showed his dick five minutes later. So what are your thoughts about the gender equality in the United States? Oh, I see. Well, you see, I have my problem of my own where I think that I'm sometimes a woman because of how small my dick is. I had a dream one time where I was with a lesbian and she thought we were bumping clits together. So for proper confirmation, I'll just whip it out right now to show you. Like, what do you say? Me, you, tomorrow? Parents home? Oh, nope, you're gonna be at daycare? Even better. I'll see you at three. So he decided to go on a more suitable dating site that would cater to his preferred age range, which is TikTok. So I guess it's no surprise a literal kid diddler would shove his way over to a platform that majority of their users are still learning multiplication tables. But Professor Brian is cracking down the code himself. He already thought three inches plus 15 years old equals 18 is legal. So he migrated over there very recently. Now, at the time that I'm making this video, his account has been deleted. I've recovered screenshots of his account, but it's just amazing to see that he's still covered over a hundred thousand followers most of them are trolls that are there to remind him of that day it's like a fucking soldier recalling his days of storming the front lines of normandy with them like a historic battle that's in the books that will be told for generations you know one day down the road we'll be telling how we saw edp's fat silky chode groundhog showed to shadow six weeks after spring started and we will never forget that image out of our head or at least i won't because i use twitter and of course i had to see that i'm still fucking traumatized i'm holding back my gag reflexes as but what i'm more curious about is his bio life has a 
the tendency of repeating itself. What the tinkle dinkle fuck is that supposed to mean? Because if it's what I think it means, I got Broward County in line right now. It makes me think he's planning out to crawl another 13 year old's window. It just goes to show the amount of shame he has towards what he's done by literally making a mockery of it by saying she was underage and I'd do it again too. Now the actual content he posted was mainly related towards football, which comes to a surprise to absolutely nobody. I mean, he even sent a picture of the Browns going to the Super Bowl and he'll be a wide receiver in prison taking it up his bush covered ass. If that doesn't show his love for the sport, then I don't know what does. There was one video, however, I want to show you of him finally being self-aware about the whole situation. But self-aware is a generous term because he pretty much made the TikTok acting like he was a college student that just got accepted to fucking LSU and he was posting a celebratory video about it. So yep, this is his official apology, his realization and acceptance of becoming a child predator. Is him calling Critical Daddy and showing a slideshow of something out of the Cake Boss intro if he was into food porn. It's at this point sad that he doesn't even for one second try to not play it off as some big joke that he wanted to have sexual relations with a child. Like, oh hey fellas, here's a cupcake. Remember I said I wanted one of those back in my heyday when I wanted to mash pissers and class kitchens with the fourth graders tuna town? You guys get it? I am the cupcake man. Yes, that's me. I wanted to submissively fuck a child and look whipped cream off of her nipples. You remember that guy? Here I am, Sam I am, green eggs and jelly dab. <laughs> oh. Like, I don't even think you see the severity of the situation you're in, EDP, and your maturity towards it shows by posting some critical fanfic of you and him sitting in a tree. This man just loves being submissive in every aspect, sexually, spiritually. You're just a fat bitch that licks people's piss off the floor. Your whole entire reputation is being everybody's bitch. And it's just so ironic you're trying to keep this character of you not caring about the situation and you being submissive towards everything when prior to the Cupcake event, BC, before Cupcake, if you will, you acted like a tough guy on the internet by constantly showcasing your guns, talking about beating people up. Hell, you even made a video about slapping a 13-year-old, and now you're out here trying to clap one. And dominating every toilet in your local county. You used to talk all that mad shit, now you're sending that same shit to a minor and giggling about it, swinging your feet up in the air on your fucking bed stand. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you. And I hope you take your bio to heart and actually do try talking to another 13 year old girl again. I know your horny ass can't hold yourself back. So I mean, I'll probably see you again in a few weeks making another video about this. And I hope you get caught again and rot the rest of your life away behind a prison cell, you fat bitch. Yeah. I can't fuck with thoughts, man, that shit is not healthy. Pull up in the lot with the Glock, bitch, I'm ready. Chilling on the block like I'm lost, counting fatty. Working around the Previously that he tried returning onto YouTube right after his suspension, but while I was making this video, it turns out EDP decided to spin the block one last time and show his moves on the tube once again. But he knew this time was short-lived, not only with his weight giving the life expectancy of a fucking bulldog, but he knew his time on YouTube was even shorter. But he made sure to get out some empowering messages as fast as he could, one of the figments of Socrates EDP decided to release on the podium. The wholesome story of how a grown man broke into elementary school. Currently, as I'm making this, the channel was terminated, but I can give a quick summary of what that was about. At first, I thought it was him telling his own autobiography. It was like a self-made story and how he was the one that did it. But surprisingly, it was just a random story that appeared in the news. I guess it was just one of EDP shooters he sent out to Parkland Elementary. But in his appall of hearing about a grown man that would put himself in danger in front of children, he decided to make his unpenetrable defense about child safety. Safety, which I don't know if he got so fat that he woke up and couldn't see his legs no more and forgot who the fuck he was, but what a goddamn hero that this man would provide different regulations and defenses to protect children from himself. Apparently we found the John Wick of child dick. He's too powerful to be stopped, so now he's giving protocols out to schools to do their best defenses from this bowler looking motherfucker. But his YouTube was removed a few days later, which is one good thing that platform has done. His other videos were practically his old content on which he tells stories about shit and cum the one time he did both at the same time. You know, just the run of the mill Bryant bangers that we wish we didn't know and fucking hate truthfully but youtube decided to pull a seven days from the ring on this motherfucker because he got banned a week after creating the channel and it's just sad how he non-stops keeps trying to come back over and over it's like team rocket from pokemon he keeps returning every episode and still gets his ass folded up in the air because it's just astonishing to me on how many platforms he has been banned off of like i don't think there's one he hasn't been which nah suck your own brown dick backwards you ugly bitch youtube nah put a brawl over the man boo debo you must be in placebo bitch you're not welcome here either tiktok more like suck the salt flakes off my cock you're not on here my space you just want to get smacked in the face don't you three speak we forgot we even launched this dusty combo at the site the hell are you doing on it getting banned off at three speak is like when gumball got rejected from the loser club with those studious ass eggs i wouldn't be surprised if edp tried launching a podcast on a call of duty game chat every time the intermission screen shows up he'll just start interviewing the other players so that was a nice dolphin dive play i seen you got in the kill cam <laughs>
Do any of y'all have daughters? With current social media presence being gone until next week when he uploads his 2023 NFL draft predictions on X hamsters or some shit like that. So it begs the question, where are his whereabouts outside the internet? What does he do in all his spare time whenever he does get banned besides driving past school zones extra slow with the tear at his eyes so he can reflect back on better times? But the curiosity got me wondering and what he does on his day-to-day -day life and with people playing Pokemon Go trying to find him, he has been spotted in multiple areas. One which shows him working as a security guard for a gas station, I'm guessing if the store ever got robbed, he could just be deployed as a human shield because you know damn well the bull is just gonna bounce off his damn stomach. So without further ado, I thought I would show you guys him stomping around the 7-Eleven looking like King Kong with a set of C-Cup titties. And imagine you trying to buy a drink and all of a sudden you got fat bodzilla charging at you like this. The low quality make this shit look like a damn Bigfoot sighting caught on camera. I mean, just look at that man out in the wild. Shit looks like the Nutty Professor when he was stomping through New York City. I'm sure every ant on that gas station floor was just screaming in fear. So with him being noticed anywhere outside his own fucking doorstep, he decided to take an important action that would change his life forever. To change the most recognizable thing about him, which was his name. Which honestly is a perfect step to hide your identity if you weren't 600 plus fucking pounds and built like a goddamn air mattress you get out of Ashley's furniture. I wouldn't be surprised if he bought the nefarious glasses from Party City and used that to try to hide his identity. Multiple transactions from Nevada court showed a man named Bryant Moreland trying to successfully change change his name. And the weirdest part about all of this is that how much it actually costs to change your name, 270 fucking dollars. Which is telling me you can pretty much change your whole identity for the price of a family night at Carabas. Let's say you have two baby mamas, you become fucking Moon Knight and just have two different identities every other week and go down to the courthouse, see another bitch, and go down to the courthouse and see another one again. Got me playing a wife swap without the cameras. Like just imagine your parents go through your search history and they find gay midget porn from last week and you can just say, no, that was Daniel that watched that. Mother, have you forgot? I'm now Humphrey. Works every fucking time. I'm speaking from experience. But yeah, if you go through their official page and website and you actually try to type in Bryant Moreland, there's no results that are actually found. Which means two things. He actually successfully changed his name or Nevada and California is so disgusted that they don't even want his name registered in their own fucking state. So now we're back to present day where he's currently just untraceable off the internet, but that doesn't mean he won't be back. He always has to have some grand entrance at least two weeks after he gets banned from everything. It's just a repeating ongoing cycle. But for the TikTok bio, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him again in the headlines for trying to do the no pay pants dance with another toddler. As of now, his current job seems to be a security guard at a gas station, which I'm sure nobody would ever touch that gas station with a 10-foot pole. There's been zero robbery attempts at that gas station because I'm sure every time EDP chases you, he probably looks like Richard Watterson whenever he was off that fucking tab of acid. He just skips after you butt booty ass naked just giggling at you. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if nobody would ever rob that place. He can't seem to grasp the severity of the situation that got him into the position he's in now, and it don't seem like he ever will. It's, it's almost like he's just in one big denial stage that's just spanning across years of his life. And apparently the police have nothing to do but give him a high five for all his work. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if cops in California gave out their next nut to EDP is almost like a tribute because it seems like they're just don't even give one flying fuck about what he did at all and not going to take any action or course to actually punish him for what he did. But at the moment that I'm making this, that's all the updates I can give you guys. I'm almost certain that there won't be an end to this. You'll probably keep posting on some third party platform that nobody ever heard of and try to go for any low hanging fruit that'll give him back the relevancy and legacy he had as an online creator in the past. There's no telling of what's going to happen in the future. Jail is the only hope I have, but it looks like that's going to be the less likely outcome out of everything. But if you enjoyed the video or update or documentary or Netflix fucking original, whatever you want to call this, then slap a like on this video for your dad slaps you. Subscribe to hit my vibe. Follow all my socials links down below, especially my Instagram. I might even call you my little princess and tell you a tale or Rapunzel on how I dive through your window, whatever the hell EDP sent to that girl. I almost had to burn my retinas after seeing that. I felt like the bikini bottom citizens where they stared at King Neptune's forehead. I almost went blind seeing his DMs. So yeah, I was planning weekly uploads, but I had a lot of shit come up and you know, I'm fashionably late, but I made sure to get this video out anyways. After this video, it is going to be weekly uploads. Briz season is still in full effect. We just had a little bit of studio downtime, all right? With technical difficulties, if you will, but we're back, bitches, and here to stay. So new video next week. I love y'all, and I am a head out. Why you so offended? If you do not like me, get the fuck out of my mansion. Oh, yeah, you mad. Fuck y'all. Post up right now, but if I see 12, I'm gone. I just count it on my rights, bro. Why you so offended? If you do not like me, get the fuck out of my mansion. Oh, yeah, you mad. Fuck y'all. Post up right now, but if I see 12, I'm gone.